Hello. Today is day one of a new experimental video series in which we're going to be getting back into shape using exclusively 19th century and early 20th century physical fitness methods. And if you want to know why exactly we're doing this, I strongly suggest that you watch the previous introductory video that we filmed, which explains everything. And that'll be linked to in the video description below. Now, today, day one is about 19th century posture and the exercises to cultivate it, specifically the standing posture. And to a lot of people, it's probably going to seem like the tamest uh, video in terms of the strenuousness and the vigor of the various exercises. But I think it's really important and it's also going to be really interesting for several reasons. First of all, it's foundational. So a lot of the subsequent things that we're going to be doing, uh, calisthenics, dumbbell exercises, Indian club exercises, a lot of these are going to be drawing from the posture. So that's, that's the foundation. Secondly, it's hugely relevant to posture problems today, in my view, which we're going to be discussing further in the video. And thirdly, it's somewhat controversial because what's happened today is that 19th century posture has really gotten a, a bit of a bad rap or a bad reputation among modern fitness people, many of whom regard it as something unhealthy and unnatural, connected to strange and outdated fashions and formalities of the past, such as the wearing of corsets, high starched collars, and the stiff military posture of those goose-stepping Victorian soldiers. And this is something that I've found is fairly pervasive in the modern fitness community today, even held by some very knowledgeable and respected people. And as an example, I'm going to read a quote from a popular semi-famous fitness guru today, who shall go nameless, and he states that this posture is, and I quote, based upon the perverse social restrictions on movement during the Victorian era. Perverse. That's a very strong word. But was it actually based on something perverse? Let's examine these methods and find out for ourselves. First of all, when you read these texts, most of the authors actually warn against the wearing of corsets. So, just like today, sure, some unhealthy fads and fashions existed, but there were also plenty of smart people out there warning against them. Now, when you look at the posture that the fitness teachers of the era were advocating, it's very interesting because while there were a lot of different competing fitness methods, different approaches, and teachers who disagreed with one another, with regards to the standing posture, everyone in the 19th century is pretty much on the same page. They are very consistent, and they're all more or less advocating the same thing. So this tells us a lot about the thinking at the time. So what were the major elements of 19th century posture? Well, the first key aspect, which is probably the one that gets the most flack from modern people, is a straight back, or a, quote, erect carriage, as they called it at the time, which has been criticized in our time as being very unhealthy, because, of course, in our infinite modern wisdom and superiority, we now know that the spine has a natural curve to it, and it would be foolish and hurtful to try to completely straighten that out. So this past approach has been deemed as absurd and even dangerous. But here's the thing. The physical culture teachers and authors of the period were not stupid. They knew anatomy. They understood the shape of the skeleton, and had for at least hundreds of years, if not more. And if you look at these texts and treatises from the time period, you'll find that they're not actually telling you to make your back totally straight like a stick figure or a cartoon. What they're really saying is to adhere as much as possible to the ideal of having a straighter spine. So if you look at the images here, you see on the right a stooping posture of the period, and on the left you see the ideal a person who still has a natural curve to their spine, but which is closer to a straighter posture. And they explain the exact reasons why they were advocating this. It was not primarily aesthetic or fashionable. It was structural. It was corrective. These teachers at the time, they were looking around and seeing lots of people with terrible posture, with spinal abnormalities, and they wanted to correct that. So their thinking was, which you see illustrated here, is that just like the human spine, a bent or curved stick supporting an iron weight will become increasingly bent and eventually buckle over time, whereas a straight stick will better support that weight because it is structurally sound, just as a person with a hunched or astute physique will continue to worsen over time to become even more stooped, perhaps with a widow's hump under the weight that they carry. And what weight is that? 
their own body weight. However, a straighter spine and an erect posture will better sustain itself into old age because it will be carrying that weight in a more structurally sound way. And I've personally known people from the older generation who maintain that posture. And in an amazing coincidence or a synchronicity that occurred while I was planning this very video, while I was hiking Runyon Canyon, which is a short distance from where I live here in Hollywood, California, I passed this elderly man who was hiking the entire canyon all while successfully balancing a water bottle on his head, which he claimed to do every day. This being no small feat for someone of his age, as this is a 2.7 mile loop with an elevation gain of 750 feet. I've been seeing you walking up and down. It's pretty impressive balancing that bottle uh, on your head. Do you mind if I ask you real quickly, uh, what was your thinking or why you're, you decided to do it? First of all, if I was out bottle, nobody asked me why I'm here with. Uh, but really, to keep my posture. So you're 75, and, and it's have you felt 76. 76? Have you felt that it's helped you? Oh. Of course. Oh, come on. You can see I I can do like this. <laughs> Unfortunately, I could not get him to tell me if he had learned this from someone in his homeland of the Ukraine, or if this was something that he made up on his own. However, it is interesting to note that exercises like these are recommended in the 19th century, as you see here, and even as early as 1782 in the French gymnastics book of Clement Joseph Tissot. And another extraordinary coincidence happened pertaining to the first exercise that I'll be doing and I'm going to be showing here, which comes from the 1850s and which involves straightening your back for several minutes while aligned against a post or wall. Imagine my surprise when I came across this interview with Arnold Schwarzenegger. As much as you practice every day sitting, standing across uh, against the wall, that reminds me, um, reminds you always, it reminds the back that you got to keep your back straight rather than start slouching down like so many guys do when they get to be like 40, 45, all of a sudden they walk around like that, like beaten dogs. I hate that look. So forget about that. So stand against the wall every day and just practice and keep your head back, your chest out, and stand like this for five minutes. It reminds the head, the brain, that it has to keep you straight all day. The same is with the stomach always. It keeps you always pulling in the stomach and remind you not to just let it out and be out of control. When I saw this, I was astounded. Here we have, amazingly, Arnold Schwarzenegger advocating the exact same exercise more than 160 years later. And I spent some time looking at other YouTube videos on posture just to see if anyone else was advocating this particular exercise, but I couldn't find that. It was all just modern calisthenics type stuff. Now, obviously, I don't know Arnold personally. I would love to be able to ask him where he learned this or if it's something he came up with on his own. But knowing his clear demonstrated interest in old school classical methods, as you see here, it wouldn't surprise me at all if this came from a traditional or historical source. So, on to key element number two of 19th century posture. Shoulders back and down, not hunched. This is something else that has also been unfairly maligned today as being unhealthy and unnatural. So what was this all about? Well, at the time, the physical culture teachers literally said that a common affliction was shoulders hunched forward, also known as rounded shoulders, the reason being that almost all of the work that people were doing, whether they were a laborer or had a desk job, they were all using their hands in front of them all the time, and that was pulling their shoulders forward unnaturally. Does this sound familiar? Because this is something that is happening everywhere today, referred to usually as the computer posture or the cell phone posture. So I think this is highly relevant. So once again, the idea was that these exercises were seen as corrective or curative, to make the posture more natural rather than unnatural or less natural. And the third element we have to standing posture number three is chest out, stomach in. Once again, this is seen as corrective. People at the time, they were slouching, their guts or their bellies were protruding forward, contributing to an unstable and an unsound structure in the human frame. And once again, this is something that Arnold Schwarzenegger commented on briefly in that same interview. And then, of course, don't forget to do the vacuum. Practice the vacuum. So that when you, I'm going to stand up right now, you stand like this, and 
you hold it like that, 15 seconds, three times 15 seconds, and now your brain starts remembering, oh, one of the functions I have is pulling the stomach in, not letting, the, uh, letting it hang out, but that pulling it in, controlling it. So once again, we have a bridge from the past to the present showing the relevance of these methods. So the first exercise that we're going to do comes from 1857, and it's the same one that Arnold Schwarzenegger was talking about earlier, where you're just standing with your back against a wall for several minutes. We're going to do it for about five minutes. And the main thing is you're, you're keeping your entire back aligned against the wall, even the small, the back, the neck, everything. Uh, the image from 1857 shows uh, the position with your palms forward, which uh, they don't explain why that is, but I speculate that it's because brings your shoulder blades uh, in a little bit closer than the other hand positions would. Also a brief disclaimer, this video is not intended to be instructional even though I'm discussing some of the technical aspects of them. Uh, these videos are not a replacement for an instructor, they are experimental. I'm performing this experiment on myself so you should not just try to follow along. And if you want to read the whole disclaimer uh, and other reasons why you shouldn't, I put them in the video description below and it's also discussed at length in the first introductory video that we did, which is also linked in the video description below. So I'm going to start and, and time it for, uh, for five minutes here. It's much harder than it looks to really keep your back completely aligned, flush against that against that uh, wall or door, it really does take a bit of, of core strength. Okay. So uh, that was a lot more difficult, I think, than it, it looked or that I expected. Uh, my back, my lower back in particular, constantly wanted to come away from that wall, and so my lower back and a little bit, uh, my neck and shoulders are a little bit, a little bit sore from doing that exercise. So this next exercise is a variation on the last one, and it appears toward the turn of the century in a text put forth by John Harvey Kellogg's Battle Creek Sanitarium in Michigan. And it's basically the same thing, except that you completely arch your back. Your hips and your tailbone remain connected to the wall, and your head, the crown of the head, touches the wall. So we're going to try that now. Probably is not, I'm not doing it quite as good as the guy in the picture, but this is as far as I can go without hurting myself. Whew. Okay, uh, I can tell you that that works your neck quite a bit and also I'm really feeling that in the, uh, the lumbar uh, muscles of the lower back. So this next exercise comes from 1857 from the Illustrated Family Gymnasium and it's essentially an exercise to eliminate rounded shoulders, bring your shoulders back. So you place your hands on your hips, you inhale while bringing your elbows back together and your shoulder blades together, which is really what you're trying to work there, and then you exhale while returning to the starting position. This next exercise comes from the same source from 1857, and it's also intended to eliminate rounded shoulders by strengthening the muscles around the shoulder blades and also to 
bring your shoulders down a little bit and to expand the chest. And essentially you clasp your hands behind your back and you thrust them downwards while exhaling at the same time and then inhaling while you return them to the initial position. The next exercise is from a bit later, from 1889. It is Scottish in origin, and it's similar, but you're really isolating those muscles uh, around your shoulder blades, clasping your hands behind your back, and you are bringing your shoulder blades completely together as much as possible, and then throwing them forward, once again timed with the inhalation and exhalation. After doing all those three exercises, I can tell you that the muscles in between my shoulder blades are really, really sore. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see how that feels tomorrow as well. The final exercise we're going to do today is uh, an exercise for posture while walking. Uh, and it comes from 1857, at least that's the, the earliest text that I've seen it in. And it uses a stick, it doesn't specify what type of a stick, so I'm using this uh, Irish blackthorn shillelagh. And the stick is placed across the small of the back. Your, it's resting in the crook of the elbows, which would be at right angles, with vertical fists like this. And the focus is simply on walking with an upright, aloft posture and keeping these shoulders back and down. And the text says you can do this for 10, 15 minutes a day, several times a day. So I'm gonna start doing it every day. So this is the basic position shown from different angles. Walking. From now on, I'll be doing these exercises every day. Please join us next time as we begin with 19th century calisthenics and Swedish free gymnastics.